Hello everyone! I've been talking a lot about dashboards lately, so I think today we're going to take a look at something different. Rest assured, I'm still working on my dashboards and I hope to have some new designs to share soon. In fact, I just got a couple of new dedicated devices and I'm working on setting them up with some custom dashboards. So keep your eyes open as I'm going to share more about that soon. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you'll get those notifications when I post some new content. Way back when, I used to follow SourceForge. This was the place that all the latest and greatest open source software would show up. Not sure if they still do it, but they used to send an email and they would highlight the top new project every month. I always looked forward to this and I would always download and try out the new release. Now when it comes to Home Assistant, there's two similar things that I look for. First, the monthly release blog. I love reading about the updates. It's like Christmas as you read about all the new options and features that have been added. Then I go ahead and I install the update and try them out myself. The second, I love scrolling through hacks to see all of the new repos that have been added, reading about new ideas and options for Home Assistant. Today, I'm going to share my essential finds from within hacks, the Home Assistant community store. I would like to share with you some of the custom elements that this integration provides to help make my Home Assistant setup awesome. Let's call this the top five elements that hacks provides for my Home Assistant setup. But before we get into the wonderful world of hacks, I want to take a minute and talk about the Home Assistant add-on store. The Home Assistant add-on store, it's built into Home Assistant. This is the place for official add-ons. Now, these additional standalone third-party software packages that are installed on top of Home Assistant OS, most of these add-on applications provide integrations for Home Assistant. Now, there are official ones like ESP Home, Mosquito Broker, Z-Wave, Piper, or Open WakeWord. These are all available within the default installation of Home Assistant. As well, there's some community-built ones like Advanced SSH, Node-RED, Plex Media Server, Grafana, and Studio Code Server. These are also all available to be installed, and they can be integrated into Home Assistant, allowing you to work with, for example, Z-Wave devices. Now, Hacks does not provide any add-ons for Home Assistant. In fact, Hacks is more like a directory that can help you discover, download, and maintain custom elements such as integrations, platforms, themes, and custom dashboard cards or modifications. These are going to help you enhance your smart home. Let me say it again, Hacks does not provide any add-ons. And I'll admit, this is a little confusing, but it's an important distinction. All right, my PSA is complete. Please let me know if I've misspoken it all down in the comments, or if there's anything else I need to add. And how about a thumbs up if I got it right this time? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Hacks and the top five elements it provides for me. Now, if you've never used Hacks, pause this and head over to hacks.xyz. That's H-A-C-S dot X-Y-Z. They got great documentation. They're going to help you get it set up super easy. All right, let's work backwards. My number five is kiosk mode. If you've ever seen any of my recent videos, and you'll know that I have a ton of dedicated standalone devices in my home. I can easily load up Home Assistant dashboards on these devices in a browser, but I want to be able to customize the view. I want to be able to lock down features so that family members and friends can only interact with the dashboards I want them to. Kiosk mode allows us to have a ton of control over our dashboards. For starters, we can turn off headers, menus, edit buttons, even make it so the mouse pointer is not displayed. I mean, it is a touchscreen after all. We can pretty much lock down any end user control we want, essentially only allowing interaction with the controls you place on the dashboard. In fact, you can even go a step further. Suppose you want a thermostat displayed. You want people to know what the temperature is, but you don't want them adjusting it. Well, you can use kiosk mode to remove the controls from that thermostat. Or maybe you want to display any updates to Home Assistant, but remove the option to actually install them. Kiosk mode has a ton of configuration values that allow you to lock down browser controls, notifications, and more. It's a great custom element that helps you share your dashboards without fear of unwanted access to your Home Assistant setup. Number four, Alexa Media Player. This component allows you to control Alexa devices from your Home Assistant. It uses the unofficial API and it works much like using the Alexa app or even talking to Alexa directly. This allows you to control Amazon devices using Home Assistant media device controls, basically playing and controlling music as well. You can access the built-in library of sounds and notifications on Alexa devices. You can send custom notifications. For example, I use Alexa Flex devices for notifications around my home, such as doorbells or opening the garage door. 
I can send custom text messages, or in the case of the doorbell, simply tell Alexa to play one of the built-in doorbell chime notifications. Now at number three, it's browser mod. Although similar to kiosk mode, this will allow you to create an entity for each of your browsers that connect to Home Assistant. You can then target actions for each of those browsers. For example, you can send a pop-up message to a specific browser. So if you have a tablet at your front door, you could pop up a camera on the screen when someone rings the doorbell. Now you can also use each browser as a media player. So in that same example, you could play a notification sound from the browser on that tablet at the front door, along with the camera view. Number two on the list is card mod. Card mod allows us to make CSS changes to, well, everything dashboards. And to be honest, this one could, and it might if you're interested, have a whole video all to itself. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Now you can start small with this one. You can change some colors to card backgrounds, icons, etc. You can change text size and color. Or as you get more advanced, you can even move elements around within a card or even hide them completely. Have you ever wanted to eliminate the icon or change text to be much larger? Card mod is your go-to custom element. You can also use templates. These are processed by the Home Assistant backend and they'll update the front end elements. And by the way, this can be used with pretty much anything on a dashboard, including mushroom cards, which you can also find in hacks. Here we go, number one on my list, button card. This one has always been on my list, but recently it's skyrocketed to number one since I started using it to create entire dashboards. If you've not watched my video on how I do that, check it out. And it's a pretty cool way to get full control over the placement of cards on your dashboard. No grids, brick walls, or any types of layout that are gonna stop you from putting your cards pretty much anywhere you want on the screen. In general, button card, it's a custom card with superpowers. It allows us to create many types of custom buttons or cards. It allows for super detailed styling, dynamic updates to the buttons. And for example, it's easy to create a card that will change colors or look completely different based on the state of an entity. You can even add attribute information to make it super detailed dashboard cards, such as network monitoring. It's one of those cards I turn to when nothing else exists and I need to make something custom. Well, those are my top five. There are many, many more that I use, but these are my go-to must-install ones that I think most people are gonna find useful. Honorable mention for me would be Hayward OmniLogic integration or the WebRTC camera integration, which almost completely removes any latency to my camera feeds. I always install these as well, but they may not be for everyone. So if you're new to Home Assistant, make sure you take some time to browse the hacks directory. It's often a great place to find ways to solve common questions or even just up your Home Assistant game. Let me know in the comments if you have other suggestions, ones that I may have missed or even overlooked. And I always look forward to trying something new. Thanks everyone for watching. Keep an eye out for my next video and I'm gonna see you in that next one.